AMD's Ryzen 5 processors are right around the corner, and they appear to be very compelling processors. On March 15, 2017, AMD announced four processors from their Ryzen 5 lineup, which will be hitting store shelves on April 11, 2017. The Ryzen 5 processors have a much bigger target audience as opposed to their 8-core counterparts, since they're considerably cheaper. Starting from the bottom of the list, we have the Ryzen 5 1400X, which has an MSRP of 170 or 169 US dollars. This is a 4-core A-thread processor with a base clock of 3.2 GHz and a boost clock of 3.4 GHz. $20 more will get you the Ryzen 5 1500X, which is also a 4-core A-thread processor, except with a higher base and boost clock, 3.5 GHz and 3.57 GHz respectively. Moving up, we have the Hexacores, 6 cores, 12 threads, starting at just $220. There will be two 6-core variants, which will only be differentiated by their base and boost clocks. Out of these four processors, in my opinion, the Ryzen 5 1400X and 1600 will be the better processors when it comes to performance per dollar, or which one will give you the best bang for your buck. It was reported from many users and reviewers that the Ryzen 7 1700 could actually overclock to 1700x and 1800x levels. If that is any indication as to how the 1400x and 1600x will overclock, you can just buy the lower clock processors and overclock them yourself, as it's not a hard thing to do at all and only really takes a few minutes. You'll actually save quite a bit of money there and you can use that saved money towards faster memory or towards a better GPU. Furthermore, the Ryzen 5 1400X and 1600 come with a stock cooler, which are actually quite capable at handling a moderate overclock. Now one of the reasons why these processors are so compelling and attractive at their price points is because there have never been any products like these Ryzen 5 CPUs offered from AMD's competitor, Intel. For example, 4-core 8-threaded processors from Intel such as the 6700K and 7700K retail for around $340 to $350, while the Ryzen 5 4-core and 8-thread processors are offered for around half that price. And it's not just the 4-cores, Intel currently has 6-core or hexa-core processors on the market which range from $425 to a little over $600, while AMD is giving you a processor with the same amount of cores and threads for less than half the price. With these prices, AMD's new Ryzen 5 processors fall alongside Intel's i5, which have always been more popular amongst the mainstream user. Therefore, I think these processors will be very popular and successful as their price to performance ratio is great. Not to mention, AMD also offers three types of motherboards with three different chipsets, two of which, the X370 and B350 chipsets, will allow you to overclock. The B350 motherboards are the ones that I particularly wanted to focus on. Most of the boards offer much of the same features that the more expensive X370 boards offer, except for support for SLI, beefier VRMs, a surplus of SATA ports, and an, and an extensive back I.O. configuration. However, they are considerably cheaper than the X370 boards and are a fraction of the X99 bo motherboards which can significantly bring down the price of your overall build. Again, if you want you can choose to save that money or use it towards uh, better memory or an SSD or even a better GPU. An X99 motherboard and 6800K processor can run you about $620 whereas a Ryzen 5 1600 and with a B350 motherboard will cost you around $315. Now sure, with the X99 you get quad-channel memory, SLI support, more PCIe lanes, more SATA ports, and if you take advantage of all those things, sure, go for the X99 platform. But if you don't need any of that and only care about having a 6-core 12-thread processor, the Ryzen 5 1600 will be a better deal. You also really have to ask yourself this, is that premium that Intel charges really worth almost double the price? Now you might be thinking, okay, well that all sounds good on paper, but what about performance? These CPUs aren't even out yet, so we don't know how they'll perform. Now although that is true, what I can show you guys are some results I obtained by simulating the performance of a Ryzen 5 1600X processor by disabling two of the cores from my 1800X. This could give you an idea as to how these processors will perform, the actual retail products could differ greatly from these simulated results, or they could be quite close. We're not sure yet, so take these numbers with a grain of salt. You can find the specification list 
down below in the video description if you're interested in reading all that stuff. But we're going to be jumping straight into the benchmark results here as I know that is what you guys came here to see. Looking at the benchmarks, we can see the simulated Ryzen 5 1600X showing us some impressive performance. Throughout majority of the titles, we can see it trailing right behind the Ryzen 7 1800X which was overclocked to 4GHz. It also trades blows with the heavily overclocked Intel Core i5-6600K in many of the titles such as Hitman 2016, Battlefield 1, Shadow of Mordor, Rainbow Six Siege, Dirt Rally, and Gears of War 4. Games such as GTA 5 and Rise of the Tomb Raider show us that the simulated 1600X has a considerable lead over the 6600K as those games will utilize multiple threads and scale well with the amount of threads that the system has available. Total War Warhammer and Far Cry Primal are the only two titles that show us that the simulated 1600X falls significantly short, but overall the average FPS attained by the processor are quite impressive. Overall, we see a performance deficit of about 8% when compared to the 1800X which cost more than double the price. Looking at the minimum results and we see a similar story. In fact, the performance deficit here is uh, actually much smaller as the 1600X across majority of the titles almost ties the 1800X while offering minimum significantly higher in half of the titles than the i5-6600K. And in some titles where it falls behind, the performance difference isn't as big. So overall, judging from these results, the 6-core Ryzen 5 processors will offer you the best bang for your buck if the actual retail products actually come close to this kind of performance. If you're an individual that prioritizes gaming over productivity, then the Ryzen 5 processors will offer you guys better value when compared to the Ryzen 7 processors as performance was close enough. You know, many people criticize the Ryzen 7 processors for being bad gaming processors because they weren't blowing out a cheaper i7 or overclocked i5 out of the water in terms of gaming, since they are priced higher. However, you must understand that those processors aren't just meant for gaming. They're also catered towards those who are content creators or those that need to run uh, multiple vir virtual machines, therefore need multiple cores, multiple workstation tasks. So if you're just a gamer, you don't buy a $400 or $500 processor for just gaming. However, looking at the price range of the Ryzen 5 processors, and now you're looking at something that seems sensible for the gamer to spend their money on. If you have been following me since the beginning, then you'll know that I've had the i5-6600K for quite a while. I love that processor and was satisfied by its gaming performance and still am. However, if I was to choose between a Ryzen 5 1600 or 1600X and an i5-6600K or 7600K now, I would choose the Ryzen 5 processor. Why? Simply because they have triple the thread count. Sure, the i5s will offer better single core performance, but games are now moving towards using multiple threads. Also, having multiple threads will allow you to have multiple tasks running in the background, whereas the i5 that has just 4 threads, you'll be limited as to what you can do. Not to mention, streaming will be much more doable on the 1600X, your stream will be fluid, and performance impact on your gameplay will be minimal. Not only that, but if you want to do some content creation on the side, rendering videos on a 12-threaded processor will also be better, along with any other content creation program you may use, such as like Photoshop or... CAD software. So these are just some reasons as to why I believe that the Ryzen 5 processors, especially the Hexacore processors, will be very popular. They offer a great price to performance ratio, are much more versatile than similarly priced i5s, and provide you with a future proof system. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. The Ryzen 5 processors will be out soon, very soon actually, so we'll have to wait and see what kind of performance they actually offer. I'm hoping that the performance they do offer falls in line with what I saw from my own simulated results. Well guys, that wraps up this video as to why I think the Ryzen 5 processors will be successful processors. If you guys found this video informative and enjoyable, then hit that like button. Leave any thoughts, questions, comments in the comment section down below. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.